Hello and welcome to Upfront. I'm Kang Tae-ri. Today we zoom in on the young generation of North Korea and their 20s and 30s who are expected to play a leading role in bringing changes to the North Korean regime. And to help us go up front and in depth today on this discussion, a great panel of experts is on board. First up to my left, Mr. Kim Gwang Jin, a senior fellow from the Institute for National Security Strategy. Thanks so much for joining us today. Nice to meet you. And Professor Kim Seok Kang from the Department of North Korean Studies at Ihua Women's University. Welcome to the studio. Okay, thank you. And of course, Mr. Ri Jung Su, a co-president of the Sustainable Development Global Network. So great to have all of you um, with us uh, today. And before we go up front, let's uh, take a look at how and why the younger generation of North Korea is garnering attention as the generation that can bring changes to the reclusive state. North Korea, an isolated nation with nuclear weapons, one that is a widespread violator of human rights that is ruled by a dictator. The regime has been trying to reach out to the international community since the beginning of October. Kim Jong-un personally ordered the release of a U.S. detainee without a visit from a special envoy. North Korea also allowed an investigative team from Japan to visit for talks on the abduction of Japanese nationals in the 70s and 80s. They arrived in Pyongyang on the 27th, making it the first time in 10 years that Japanese officials visited the North to discuss the issue. At the center of North Korea's recent attempts to escape from isolation is a young leader in his early 30s who took hold of power three years ago. Kim Jong-un, who is listed in the Guinness World Book of Records as the youngest head of state, has recently shown a desire to improve relations with the international community. He has also spearheaded efforts to institute a generational shift within politics, the military, and even broadcasting. Along with the young leader's recent moves to galvanize change within North Korean society, the international community has paid attention to younger North Koreans who have advanced into major positions within society, including the military and academia. The number of people under the age of 40 is expected to make up 55.8% of the entire North Korean population in 2023. These people are likely to raise complaints about their poor living standards and challenge the Kim Jong-un regime. North Korea's young generation hasn't benefited from socialism and now has become distrustful of the regime. Can they contribute to bringing about changes to the North? Can North Korea really be changed? So when it comes to North Korea, there are just mm. so many different angles to look at it from. We have, of course, the inter-Korean relations, the nuclear program. Of course, Washington, China come into play as well, defectors, human rights issues. But I think we pay less attention, relatively speaking, to the young generation of North Korea. Do you think we should pay more attention to them? Sure. We, sh we need to pay more and more attention to the younger generation mm -hmm. for several reasons. You know, actually, until now, the world is overwhelmed with the imminent uh, security threat from North Korea, mm -hmm. uh, including the nuclear and missile, you know, development and sure. threats, proliferation, mm -hmm. and also human rights issues. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, you know, leaflets, mm -hmm. you know, whether to fly them or not, you know, mm -hmm. whether to block them, stop them, you know, but. We don't actually, uh, we didn't, you know, uh, pay attention to the younger generation. Uh, and we are now having the third generation power succession in, in North Korea. Mm -hmm. And Kim Jong-un is in his early 30s. And the people, you know, youngsters in 20s and 30s are main, you know, labor forces in North Korea uh, who will lead, you know, changes in North Korea. So we need to pay more and more attention to them. 
Professor Kim? Well, actually, it's not just young generation. We don't really uh, have to talk about everyday issue. You know, it's like a nuclear issue. You know, when you, when you say human rights, it really automatically think of a human rights issue in concentration camp. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people other than concentration camp, but we don't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. So right. when I say uh, I don't really want to human rights issue, usually we really need to concern on their daily life, mm -hmm. you know, like normal life. And uh, how, how do they get uh, like everyday meal, sure. you know, firewood, uh, their, their family relations, mm -hmm. their relations to other people, school, schooling, you know, kind of issues. Mm -hmm. We don't really know about that. Mm -hmm. We haven't really tried to know mm -hmm. that kind of issue so far. So we need to concern mm -hmm. uh, as a human being, we need to concern to another human being, how do they make their own, own life? Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. And mm -hmm. that actually takes us to the next point that I want to talk about, which is basically that takes us to the leadership question mm -hmm. in North mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. obviously. So mm -hmm. let's get some analyses on North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's grip on power. There were some concerns in the beginning three years ago. Do you think the concerns were valid? How do you think, how do you assess his leadership so far? Uh, yes, you know, uh, many uh, people, experts uh, commented that uh, Kim Jong-un is too young to lead the country and unexperienced mm -hmm. uh, and he uh, is having too many, you know, obstac obstacles and tasks uh, to fulfill. But until now, uh, he's doing well. Uh, he looks, you know, doing well, but behind the scene, we should uh, say that, you know, there are uh, some uh, dangers mm -hmm. and difficulties that mm -hmm. he should still overcome, you know. What are they? Uh, uh, having good control of this elite and paying them good money and, you know, compensation for their loyalty, mm -hmm. uh, it is a still a difficult job for him to gain enough money for that and also uh, on the economic front you know uh, there are too many uh, difficulties that he should overcome mm -hmm. uh, the uh, inflation he should he should have to solve the inflation problem mm -hmm. he should have to you know uh, turn north korean economy on track you know restore uh, this economic you know uh, system to uh, to the normal uh, 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 stage, so he still has you know many things to do. Okay. Well, while I agree with the uh, superficial part of aspect well that he has control and content, mm -hmm. that I agree with you. But I do have question or concerns that the word inner side. I think that two aspects. The one, he's a character personality. Mm -hmm. Well, that uh, he's so highly volatile. And uh, he, it really, uh, he generate uh, sort of a violent act, the action as well as uh, the distrust from the his uh, inner circle people. But just Mr. Liu said, uh, you know, he certain things he's doing is making people nervous. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he just when he just got in power, ordinary people. Uh, Sometimes they feel like, you know, he's been educated in Western world. Mm -hmm. So he might, he might allow us to have more, more freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, three years has been passed. Mm -hmm. People do not think that way. Mm -hmm. They are intimidated. They, they are scared mm -hmm. uh, by what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not really a good thing. And over the last uh, three years or so, he's been replacing a lot of um, a lot of people of his father and has been breathing youth to his regime is it because he's young himself or is it is he trying to realize his policies better uh, both in our, our regions I mm -hmm. uh, see uh, because you know it is the natural thing for them to have a gener generation uh, change you know Kim Jong-un himself mm -hmm. is in early 30s uh, and also all these, you know, senior people, elite, you know, they're so old and, you know, it is natural thing uh, mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. this new generation to come 
uh, upfront and have more, you know, uh, tasks and jobs to do. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, it is better for Kim Jong Un to have younger, you know, mm. elite and A's, you know, for him because in, it is very difficult for him to control his grandfather's generation, all very senior, you know, uh, A's, and also his father's generation. It is a burden uh, to himself. So, to you know, help for that, you know, he brought his wife, First mm -hmm. Lady Lee Sol right. Choo, you know, to many uh, official events, mm -hmm. uh, which was you know, unprecedented, mm -hmm. and his father did, never did that. Mm -hmm. And I agree on you know, Mr. Liu's mm -hmm. point of view on uh, Kim Jong-un's personality. Mm -hmm. His decision-making is instinctive, and uh, un you know, we cannot expect, it's unexpected. Right. Uh, but until now, it is not, you know, uh, working on a totally negative, you know, a direction. Uh, he is trying to have some economic, you know, changes uh, to make to have more detailed, you know, uh, policies for uh, for the past, you know, uh, uh, tests, uh, and also uh, he is having more uh, young people to go abroad. It is kind of, you know, a labor export, mm -hmm. uh, but anyhow allowing them to work, to send more people, you know, outside. Uh, so I don't think, and also we are seeing some uh, openness in North Korean uh, mm -hmm. media and their handling of, you know, uh, accidents and, you know, disasters mm -hmm. there. Uh, they are getting more open mm -hmm. to release, you know, information about their you know, accidents mm -hmm. and also uh, some wrongdoings, you know, mm -hmm. in the regime. So, f in that sense, you know, he is very active mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very aggressive mm -hmm. in having this, these kind of changes mm -hmm. and uh, decisions. But on the other, other hand, you know, on the negative uh, front, you know, he is doing more aggressive, mm -hmm. being more aggressive in having nuclear tests and uh, reacting to leaflets flying and also uh, north-south, you know, uh, Korean relations, mm -hmm. you know, he's more aggressive. So for that sense, it, it is very dangerous. Okay. But I don't think it's, it's uh, Kim Jong-un is like really open to the world. Mm -hmm. He just know that there's nothing he can do. I mean, you know, if he, if he disclose the whole society, can it be, you know, like uh, closed? Mm. By uh, from the whole society, I don't think they can they can hide from the world mm. anyway. So mm. Kim Jong Un, he's just got reached uh, thirty years, mm. right? So he knows the, the the flow of information. Although he tried to hide, mm. there's nothing he can do. So why don't I just open it? Okay. Yeah. So, so mm. but it it's good anyway. You know that there's some openness. But it's not because Kim Jong Un's uh, character, Kim Jong Un's leadership style. But he just admit that there's nothing I can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's absolutely true. The, he he what 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 he displays is selective openness. Right. Where <laughs> that uh, he wanted to show. I mean, t t for example, he wanted to show that he's westernized, mm -hmm. and he's claimed his openness. Mm -hmm. But does it really he carry the value? of what the Western society he was exposed to, mm -hmm. the human right, democratic rules, mm -hmm. or common universal uh, the rules. Mm -hmm. All these and everyday life, he does not really uh, the practice mm -hmm. these the, uh, value at all and his, his, his the, the governance. Okay. So perhaps that it appears to be he's leading the North Korea, mm -hmm. but there must be the uh, behind the scene there are a few guys that working with him mm. to do the selectively what to do, what to show. All right. So you two want to see more to uh, believe that there are real changes coming to the North Korean regime. So at this point, let's meet to one of uh, the young generation people in North Korea. I've actually had a chance to sit down with a young North Korean defector. Her name is Yi hyun Seol, and she actually made it onto the TED stage last year to speak about North Korea's human rights status. Here is her story on the realities of the younger North Koreans. Thank you so much for coming on to our show. Thank you. All right, good to have you with us. So my first question is, what's 
the number one concern for young North Koreans every day? Yeah, these days. In the past, it was loyalty. Yeah, but it changes always over the time, and it's money right now. So in the past, our parents' generation, uh, their thought, give me some, gave a best life for them. But it's completely different compared to our generation these days. In North Korea, because of the through the famine and people were dying on the street, and then people learned the true importance of money. So the concept of money is a, has totally changed in North Korea. Mm. You decided to leave North Korea in 1997. What was it like back then in terms of economic conditions, for example? It was just right before the famine started. I went, I visited my aunt's home in Hamung city and I noticed a lot of homeless families living in the train station because the company is suddenly shutting down and the ration system completely stopped. So the factory, worker, factory workers and their families just became homeless and they're wandering near the train station. If we go to the train station or near the bridge, we could easily see the dead bodies and they weren't removed. So the smells of decomposing bodies was everywhere and making people feel sick and scared and giving them a goose bumping as they passed. Yeah, this is a reality in North Korea. But also, since we are, our city was right next to the border and we had many visitors from China. And if we don't remove the body immediately, it would look shameful for North Korea. So we have the people whose only job is to remove the dead bodies. So they used hand carts to carry out the bodies and they dissect the bodies in piles. And one time, a man who didn't die yet, they put him among the dead bodies. So you briefly mentioned how the young generation in North Korea cares about money now rather than the regime. Other than that, uh, what separates them from the past generation in the North? Our uh, old generation compared to our parents' generation is more open to believing something different than what the regime tells them. Uh, this is mostly because of the information uh, flowing into North Korea from the outside world and the most uh, common are from <laughs> South Korean TV shows and dramas and pop music. Because of that, people just change. For example, you know, the young people in North Korea who's dating, they're just when they're dating, you know, they tend to copy the characters in, in the dramas and they're curious the South Korean accent. Because of the, over the time, the society has changed. When a man is looking for a woman right now, they are looking for a woman who has the ability to make money. Since the men are uh, required to work in state learned jobs, so while at that time, women can make money in the market. And gradually, a woman, the, many women, not most, but many women became the breadwinner in families. Do you think their desire for changes among the young generation in North Korea, do you think that can possibly cha bring changes to the way the North Korean leader reigns or the rate, the, how the regime works? Even though the young generations are moving into society, but they are not able to uh, bring significant changes in to, to the system because uh, all the, the high-ranking positions people, they are all from all the generations. So as they replaced, one day as they replaced by the younger generation, then we can hope for some changes. Real stories coming from North Korea. Thank you so much for your interview today. Thank you for having me. And that was a story from a North Korean defector. Now, South Korea also categorizes different generations. We have Generation X, Generation N. But I heard, I heard North Korea has those categorizations as well. Do you tell us more? Oh, yes, they do. You know, uh, the first generation, revolutionary generation, is the 
anti-Japanese mm -hmm. guerrilla, you mm -hmm. know, gener generation. Mm -hmm. We call them a uh, partisan, you know, mm -hmm. generation. And the second is uh, those uh, who fought, who fought, who experienced the, the war, Korean mm -hmm. War. Mm -hmm. And in North Korea, they call them uh, uh, war veterans. Uh, and also after that, you know, they have more and more generations. But now we are having, you know, these 20s and 30s and we can. Uh, officially, you know, North Korea uh, do not, does not categorize them as, you know, Zhang Madang mm -hmm. uh, generation. Uh, but we can, you know, categorize them as, you mm -hmm. know, Zhang Madang generation, okay. the free market generation. Or in other sense, you know, we can also uh, categorize them mm -hmm. as uh, X Kim Il Sung uh, mm -hmm. generation. So uh, they experienced this, you know, most difficult, you know, uh, mm -hmm. period. Uh, of the uh, North Korean, you know, socialist in history mm -hmm. uh, and the regime history mm -hmm. uh, from 90, uh, 1990s uh, until mm -hmm. now, you know, they are having this, you know, severe uh, economic problems as they experienced starvation and it is going on, ongoing, you know, uh, situation right now in North Korea. So, so they're the unhappy generation. Yes, most uh, unhappy and, you know, most uh, uh, miserable, you know, generation mm -hmm. in North Korea. So we uh, can expect uh, change of their mind mm -hmm. uh, and change of their approach uh, to the regime mm -hmm. and to the leader and also their uh, adjustment to these difficulties and, you know, new uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, if there is any change in North Korea, I think mm -hmm. it will be uh, inspired and uh, taken uh, by these, you know, 20s mm -hmm. and 30s. Most of North Korea's first generation is now dead. They benefited greatly from socialism since they took a leading role in partisan forces alongside former leader Kim Il-sung. The second generation, a post-war generation after the Korean War, now makes up the majority of North Korea's high-ranking officials with their strong socialist ideology. After Kim Jong-il's rise as leader, the third generation in the North led the top three projects for the revolution, which include ideology, technology, and culture. They are the ones who saw material benefits from the regime during their period of growth. The fourth generation, which is now playing a key role in society, has been strongly brainwashed since childhood, but now they have rapidly adjusted to the market economy. The fifth generation has seized global attention along with Kim Jong-un's rise to power. This generation had been completely dependent on North Korea's Changmadang market after the collapse of the North's public distribution system. They also have not been brainwashed as much as previous generations. So those who were born in the 90s, and they're actually labeled as, as we saw in uh, our clip earlier, they're labeled as the black market generation. Mm. And we have concepts like markets mm. in North Korea, socialist mm. country or mm. state, I should say. So how does this work? Do tell us more about this concept. Uh, right now, it is the combination of the formal uh, official uh, market. Mm -hmm. That we uh, see every day around. We no, 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 no. The, which is, you know, uh, allowed by the North Korean authority. Okay. Actually, they allowed them okay. to have this Changmadang mm -hmm. official market okay. where they can sell and buy uh, these, you know, uh, far, you know, farming mm -hmm. yeah, grains and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, eggs and chicken, mm -hmm. something like that, you know, uh, which is allowed to be, you know, possessed mm -hmm. and to be grown. A farm. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, they call it a uh, Nongmin Shijang mm -hmm. farmers market, mm -hmm. but it's a big, bad type of farmers market at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a small market uh, in ten days, like uh, every month, first, mm eleventh, -hmm. uh, twenty first. Mm -hmm. That's only the uh, you know Nongmin Shijang mm -hmm. is open. So the only thing, like like Mr. Kim said, you know, mm. grain is not allowed. Uh, manufactured thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. any kind of manufactured thing is not allowed mm -hmm. to buy and selling. The only thing is like you know, uh, uh, small things like egg and, and green things, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Th that's the only thing they can um, 
exchange. But mm -hmm. is this the venue where some of the young North Koreans are getting some of the exposure to the outside world no, as not, well? No, that's not the case. Okay. But that, that Mark, Kim Il-sung said, when, we go to, uh, when you go to the communist system, mm -hmm. the, this kind of small, small remnant of uh, capitalism mm -hmm. it will be perished mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. But this market is not perished at all. Mm -hmm. It's been there and growing, 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 growing mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, when, when North Korea had uh, a duos match mm -hmm. in uh, the middle of, mid of uh, 1990s, mm -hmm. They have to, I mean, all the people uh, need to have something, mm -hmm. right? So right. they just go to uh, market uh, first and then go to everywhere, buying, selling mm -hmm. and things. So then this black market mm -hmm. uh, is everywhere. So North Korean authority cannot control this kind of market activity at all. Mm -hmm. So later in 2003, mm -hmm. uh, Finally, North Korean authority say, okay, we will, we will authorize. So okay. there's a lot of black market is still working on. I see. Hmm. Mr. Kim, do you yeah. agree with her take? Uh, officially, uh, North Korean regime allowed uh, the market to function, right. actually, uh, which was called Changmadang, mm -hmm. and where the farmers, mostly mm -hmm. farmers, you know, trade mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. their farming products. Mm -hmm. But, you know, North Korean official economy the national economy collapsed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people should have to rely on these markets to gain you know, their commodities and daily necessities. Mm -hmm. So they began to trade you know, mm -hmm. uh, in this black market. So mm -hmm. the black market you know, grew more and more. And now uh, it is the combination of this official Changmadang mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also uh, of black the market. black markets. Mm -hmm. and the, the national economy itself is now the mm -hmm. combination of these two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They coexist right. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the regime itself cannot you know, restore their socialist system. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they just allow this you know, uh, informal mm -hmm. market system. Mm -hmm. And also they are now trying to embrace them, mm -hmm. to bring them into their system. Mm -hmm. So they are having laws, regulations, mm -hmm. new laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. And so now we can see that North Korean economy is the combination of this official and unofficial you know, mm. economy, mm. and also the market itself, Changmadang itself, is the combination of these mm. two. Mm. I see. So you can't really take back what you already given them, right? So I guess that's no. what it is. Mm. And it's a slippery slope. So mm -hmm. my question is, how actively are young people in North Korea pursuing money? Actually, this market, you know, free market mm -hmm. transaction, is not for the socialist system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the North Korean regime itself, you know, mm is against the mm -hmm. younger generation to experience this mm -hmm. kind of you know, free market you know, logic and you know, transactions. Mm -hmm. But they are all uh, exposed to this. Without this, they cannot survive. They cannot survive. Yeah, so don't. it is right. like mm -hmm. you know, a daily routine mm -hmm. for these 20s and mm -hmm. 30s, the young generation to mm -hmm. experience and mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be the part mm -hmm. of this you know, mm -hmm. black and official market you know, mm -hmm. transactions. Young North Koreans who have suffered from severe poverty and human rights violations have left their country and spoken out against the horrors taking place within North Korea. The heart-wrenching stories from these young North Koreans have seized the world's attention. North Korea experts have now started to keep their eye on this rising generation within North Korean society. North Korea experts from 16 different countries gathered for the first World Conference on North Korean Studies. And taking center stage here were the recent changes seen in North Korea's young generation, from education to market expansion. Recently I realized that since more than, I think, 2.5 million North Koreans, they are having now mobile phones. They are having some access to South Korean television dramas and said, development in China, I think now they are, uh, they are having different opinion about their own system. And when they start sharing that information, that those things uh, through mobile phone from one city to another city, I think it definitely going to bring uh, some important, very significant changes in North Korean system. Well, 
what we know by now is that change in North Korea is mainly change coming from the government. There is no bottom-up uh, change in, in North Korea, but information uh, is maybe the biggest uh, weapon, so to speak, uh, the younger generation has. Uh, so there is definitely an opportunity as information spreads inside North Korea. Uh, technology has had a very important uh, role to play, for example, in the end of the Cold War. Um, in the reunification of Germany, for example, it played a very positive role because people had access to the information from the outside. It also had come to play a negative role in many instances. For example, in, uh, again, in radical Islam, it had played a very negative role. So uh, technology is a double-edged sword. It can be turned for or against uh, peace uh, and progress. I would say that it's probably the younger generation. They have a very different, fragmented uh, in a life, life world. So it's for example, in the political sector, the political spheres, they might be kind of go back to the more um, strict controlling system. But in the, the economic sector, in the corporate spheres, they become like completely capitalistic. It become just like, you know, just lying under the market. But in the cultural sector, it's just also it's another layer. Even with the international community paying attention to the young generation of the reclusive state, eyes turn to which direction the younger generation might steer the regime. All right, so we're talking about uh, the young generation within North Korean society, and this could be a far-fetched, maybe premature question at this point, but are we seeing the chances of a popular revolution, mini revolution maybe, or are we just seeing fissure points in the regime? Well, actually, anything uh, is possible in mm. North Korea. You know, mm. throughout the history we, we experienced mm. and we saw that, you know, nothing uh, had happened you know, as expected, you know. Sure. Uh, even uh, currently, uh, you know, the, 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 the instant revolution in Egypt. Sure. And the expelling of, you know, Gaddafi in Libya. Nobody expected that mm -hmm. happen, you know. And also Soviet Union, collapse of Soviet Union and socialist system. Nobody expected that would happen at that time. And the unification of Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, German people at that time, you know, visited Seoul and they said that Korea will be unified, would mm -hmm. be unified in earlier than uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, anything is possible in North Korea, you know, Kim Jong-un might uh, be a dead person tomorrow mm -hmm. or you know tonight <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody can be sure so, about yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, and also so we should be prepared for you know everything I mm -hmm. think and also uh, there is a brewing of this you know w when the tipping point mm -hmm. has come mm -hmm. the weight mm -hmm. of that system will all function mm -hmm. against the regime itself mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so even though we are not, we do not have any possible s signs of mm -hmm. rebel, rebelling, mm -hmm. you know, a grassroots, you know, revolutions, something like that. But mm -hmm. anyhow, when the time comes, you know, we have seen it in Iraq. You know, they all escaped. You know, not to, to defend mm -hmm. or well, protect. You know, the the dictator at that time. I think it is. I mean, in terms of we're looking at compare with what's happening in Middle East or the Hong Kong, well. There were as an interchange with the culture, culture in, in, interchanged with the Europe and the people traveling around, mm -hmm. which is not happening in North Korea. So have the expecting the young generation to mount uh, the, any, any thought of group mm -hmm. being a political movement, that is really uh, 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 unreal at this point. Mm -hmm. However, though, I can recognize that this is a group that feels that they haven't received any benefit from socialism or they don't owe, owe anything to Kim's dynasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what uh, does it mean yeah. for the leadership in North Korea? Uh, the leadership itself, you know, uh, uh, is not uh, free uh, from all these, you know, difficulties and new generations and uh, black market, you know, phenomena. Uh, in North Korea, mm -hmm. uh, they are having you know more difficulties to to control uh, the young generations mm -hmm. and to you know change the route to to the better you know living and better you know uh, decision making. Uh, I agree you know with your point of view, but uh, it will take time for them to have 
uh, this you know uh, readjustment and uh, the w to change the way of thinking mm -hmm. and the culture itself. It takes you know long and long time, mm -hmm. but anyhow uh, the change of the regime, mm -hmm. the change of the system itself, the collapse of the system, it doesn't take that much long. Mm -hmm. you know, I mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. met a guy, the guy who shot you know, Ceausescu in Romania mm -hmm. uh, in 25 years ago in, mm -hmm. uh, during that revolution. Mm -hmm. He told, he, he confessed that you know, it took only two minutes mm -hmm. to change the regime, mm -hmm. to change the system. Well, that's certainly true. Well, New York Times reported the day before the collapse of Berlin War, they saying they, they, can, take, uh, they take a long time years. to have that happen. <laughs> right, but however, right. we got to, in terms of there is also the scientific factors, even mm -hmm. the uh, uh, sociology. We can we can see that mm -hmm. the we haven't seen any major the uh, incident mm -hmm. where that we can say oh this is a certainly the uh, certain the young the generation groups are getting together or students are getting together to do something. We haven't heard that, that many. I mean, if you're taking advantage of the system, mm -hmm. then you're happy with the status quo. Mm -hmm. So then, do we have a divide in the young generation, or do we just go with the way it is? Those who are like uh, benefited from the system, North mm -hmm. Korean system, mm -hmm. they are I don't know maybe like less than five five percent, less mm. than one percent. So you can divide, okay. but you know the the number of I people, see. those who are benefited, who are not, mm -hmm. it's like you know ninety ninety. One percent. Mm. Mm. Now let's uh, shift gears just a little bit and uh, talk about uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong Un's military. We had a chance to meet with uh, Bruce Bechtol, a former senior intelligence and analyst at the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency. Let's uh, take a listen. Kim Jong Un has gone out of his way since he became the leader of North Korea to reward scientists and technicians. And one example of this is. Um, as I'm sure you know, in Pyongyang, after the successful uh, satellite launch, missile launch of the Taepodong, also called the Unha-3 by the North Koreans, he built a huge, modern, very posh apartment building in Pyongyang for all those technicians to live in, and they called it the Unha apartment building. So I think this is reflective of the fact that Kim Jong-un is perhaps even more focused on technology uh, than his father was. Um, so what we're seeing is a, a transformation of the North Korean power circle, you know, the military, the party, and the security services, filled by the grandsons and great-grandsons of those who fought with Kim Il-sung against the Japanese. We're seeing that generational transformation. The problem is, much like Kim Jong-un, some of these people are really too young to be in the positions they're in. Um, and what does that lead to? Instability. So I think we're seeing a North Korean government right now that is as unstable as it has ever been. All right, and uh, I saw you both, uh, both of you nodding when he said some of his people are too young. That means mm. more uncertainty. You mm -hmm. agreed with him. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Kim? Yeah, sure, I agree. And more uncertainties and, you know, Young people, they are getting, you know, aggressive in many things. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, for, uh, you know, invention, of course, it is for technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it is good to have young people to be aggressive, mm -hmm. uh, to be energetic, but, you know, in, on uh, the human rights and, you know, uh, security issue and also, uh, you know, the future of, you know, uh, the country and its economy. In that sense, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having these young people at the military more aggressive young people at the military and the security, you know, uh, jobs. It is, you know, uh, ha giving mm. us more uncertainties and more dangers. Mm. Okay, yeah. all right. Kim Jong Un is not a special person. He's not God. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not different from from uh, us. You know, like regular mm -hmm. nominal <laughs> the people. You know, mm. so he's just he's just one of us. Mm -hmm. So think about. I mean, when I look back. Uh, when I just reached to 30, mm -hmm. I thought I knew everything, you know. <laughs> I've grown up mm -hmm. and I, I can do everything. Mm -hmm. So he's just like that. And I think he's really sincere when he says, you know, like, uh, uh, from now on, our people would not be stopped at all. Mm -hmm. I, I will make it, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. So I think he's really sincere when he says so. Mm -hmm. So he, he thinks, you know, 
I, he, he, he thinks maybe, you know, I'm different from my, ma my father, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. My father is like sort of failed uh, leader. Mm -hmm. uh, he, when, when he was a ruler, my people were stopped. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm in the position, I, I can do, you know, I can do differently from my father. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's like mimicking his grandfather relatively well off uh, period. And when you say that he's just like us mm -hmm. in early yeah. 30s, actually that's the message that South Korean activists are trying to get mm -hmm. to North Korean, hopefully younger generation and whatnot. And that's the through the anti-Pyongyang leaflets, which is the hottest issue mm -hmm. between the two Koreas mm -hmm. these days. And obviously North Korea is angry with mm -hmm. them. Do you think it's because it's working, the leaflets? Oh, yes, it, yeah, yeah, it's mm. working. Uh, North Korea is a uh, you know, one-man ruled country. Mm -hmm. So Kim Jong-un, Kim family is the sacred, flawless, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. almighty mm -hmm. uh, person there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it is based on, and it is built on uh, delusion mm -hmm. and, you know, and fake mm -hmm. uh, and you know, li lies. So all these leaflets are saying about that. Mm -hmm. you know, he's not a secret mm -hmm. man. He's not a god. You know, mm -hmm. He's the person like our, ourselves. And his mother you know, was from Japan. Mm -hmm. you know, and they distinguish these you know, people into different classes, mm -hmm. right. like a you know, uh, 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 caste system. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, his mother, the leaders, the supreme leader's mother, uh, belonged to this very bad, you yeah, know, right. untouchable. Cla yes, mm -hmm. class. <laughs> but people do not have, you know, information about that. So mm -hmm. the leaflets are telling mm -hmm. all these, you know, uh, forbidden, uh, mm -hmm. you know, truth mm -hmm. and information to uh, the people inside North Korea. So they are very, you know, anxious about that. Mm -hmm. I heard that from uh, some of the uh, North Korea defectors that the many uh, balloons. Uh, did not reach the inland, mm -hmm. but mm. a few reaches. But in contents, there are the message there was information that that they did not know. Certainly, enlightens that mm. the situation right. and the uh, leadership as well as the Kim Kim family. But also, the, what I hear is that the stockings, the socks, choco pie. What's in there? Mm. Uh, the contents are that very uh, uh, attractive here. Mm. So it used to be the uh, founders report to the uh, police or the office, government officers. Then now it, what I hear that the people get this and the sharing or mm -hmm. even selling in the black yeah. uh, market. Is that something that is happening? Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. You know, and also the officers are the first who want to find oh, these leaflets because they uh, are together with the one dollar bill yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. and mm -hmm. also the messages mm -hmm. from the Bible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which are all, you know, of course, forbidden mm -hmm. in North Korea. Mm -hmm. So it is affecting in many ways. Now, let's get one more view from outside the studio. He's a North Korea watcher who calls the young generation reform power, uh, stressing the importance of these young people in reforming the North. Uh, meet Koo Hae-woo, a president of the Korea Institute for Future Strategy. When we look at the reformation process that socialist nations have gone through, most of them seem to promote the market economy. One of the more noticeable changes that has taken place within North Korea is the use of mobile phones. Over 2.5 million North Koreans are now using mobile phones, and most of them are young people. The use of mobile phones is considered symbolic of the recent changes and reforms within North Korean society. Younger North Koreans are relatively less bound to the regime, so they have taken a more positive stance on reforming the nation. So there is a high probability that the young generation in North Korea, those who are in their 20s and 30s, will actively participate in reforming and opening the nation up to the outside world, compared to the past generations. All right, so he's calling the young generation uh, the so-called reform power. So my next question is, what does South Korea do or does it do anything? Because it's been pretty busy putting together a unification committee by, you know, called for by the uh, president in the South. Um, how should Seoul prepare for this? 
Actually, for the political reason, you know, uh, South Korea uh, finds itself very difficult to mm. have mm. broader contacts with this new generation mm. of North Korea. Uh, but, you know, we should try our best to influence them, to uh, give them more information, uh, and also to, you know, uh, uh, foster uh, opportunities for them to study traffic training you know for the free market economy and also other uh, stuff uh, mm. and there are ways to do that we can make use of these international organizations and also we can work with some you know ngos in other mm. countries mm. and one ngo in singapore is very active you mm -hmm. know in organizing these you know seminars and training courses for the financial people in north korea and also we are having you know a university mm. uh, you know Mm -hmm. yeah. And that Boost. one, yes, uh, is a very important, you know, mm -hmm. channel for the outside to put in, you know, more books and information to that university. Mm -hmm. And also some countries are inviting the students to their, you know, universities for training and uh, for, uh, for, you know, courses. So there are ways that mm -hmm. we can, you know, uh, uh, engage in this kind of, you know, uh, uh, active role mm -hmm. of fostering this mm -hmm. 20s and 30s generation. Professor Kim, yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, you know, young children, pregnant, uh, you know, yeah, woman, pregnant woman, yes. mm -hmm. uh, and disabled people. They need a lot of things mm -hmm. that North Korean government cannot support at all right. at this point. Mm -hmm. So, if they say something, uh, I mean, if they can take take it, you mm -hmm. know, we can we can supply as much as you want okay. so just let me know we can we can supply mm -hmm. anything you know like uh, for disabled people you know there's a lot of things they need mm -hmm. so uh, it, it's 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 here so if you want to take it you know just take it as much as you can mm -hmm. that kind of thing is very important although uh, our government is doing uh, good mm -hmm. relatively well but uh, you know they just put a little bit more mm -hmm. okay <laughs> Something more, mm. you know. Especially, uh, I, I just want to put, you know, for disabled. For the disabled. Yeah, we can do everything. Okay, so. all right. So, concluding this uh, upfront uh, conversation, I want to get your final thoughts or anything that you wanted to add to your comments so far. Uh, actually, dictatorship, you know, uh, cannot last eternally. Mm -hmm. And so is uh, uh, North Korean Kim's kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and the water, you know, it is natural for the water to join at the uh, rivers and all rivers, you know, should flow to the, to the sea. So uh, at some point, you know, we might see uh, the collapse of the regime of North Korea and we can see uh, the unification of, of, you know, two Koreas. So we need to be prepared for that and also we need to act for that. Okay, Professor Kim. Do not see hope only, but not too much pessimistic. Hmm. So just keep going on, but not too much, okay. you know, I mean, if you, if you just see uh, hope only, then you know, it's not realistic. Okay. But do not feel pessimistic too much. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep going mm -hmm. <laughs> and do what you can do mm -hmm. and keep an eye on it. Okay, all right. Well, all three of you, thank you so much for going up front about this uh, topic and uh, coming in today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank, thank, you. thank you. And that's all the upfront for this edition. Thank you so much for watching and join us again next time.